Well, thank you, uh, everyone, for joining us uh, here today. Today, uh, we pass the Parent, Parents' Bill of Rights to protect the rights of Saskatchewan parents to be involved in all uh, important decisions regarding uh, their children's uh, education. Uh, the right, really, for parents, uh, the right, and I would say the right, not the opportunity, uh, to be involved in their, ch their child's education and their child's life. Next week, uh, in this building, we will start a new legislative session with the speech from the throne for the year of 2023, which will all be uh, very much focused on continuing to build and protect uh, what we have built in the province of Saskatchewan with respect to the economy, uh, our communities, and ultimately our, our families. Uh, I can't provide a lot of detail on what is going to uh, be in that speech from the throne next week, but I would say that it is going to outline uh, the priorities, uh, priorities that are equally important uh, to Saskatchewan communities, Saskatchewan families, and, and individuals that we collectively uh, represent across this province, um, and that the government has been working on alongside uh, this important education policy this past week. We will continue to focus on protecting uh, Saskatchewan families when it comes to affordabil affordability measures that this government has in place, uh, particularly in the area of, of housing. We'll see measures in the areas of investment attraction and job creation so that we can continue to build a strong economy and ultimately uh, use that economy to build and strengthen our communities. We'll see the next steps under the Saskatchewan First Act to protect uh, that Saskatchewan economy from federal government intrusion in areas like energy production and electrical generation. And we'll continue to protect Saskatchewan communities and families from the, the very scourge of drug addiction and the availability of drugs in our communities uh, through our new action plan for mental health and addictions as well as our, our associated uh, new approach to, to homelessness uh, in our communities in Saskatchewan and providing the opportunity for pathways for those that all too often have taken a, a problematic turn in their life. We'll continue to improve health care in this province by building new health care facilities, uh, hiring uh, more health care professionals under the most ambitious human health, re health human resource plan in the nation, but by also looking at new and innovative ways uh, to service uh, our communities from corner to corner in this province. So with that, a couple of comments on uh, what had occurred uh, this past week uh, in the passing of the Parental Bill of Rights and ultimately uh, what is going to occur over the next number of weeks and some of the work that the government has been doing uh, alongside uh, the, the work that has been occurring the past week. So if there's any questions, we'd be happy to take those. There's a number of uh, individuals, MLAs, on both sides of the House that were not present today. Um, some were not present for personal reasons. Some were not present for uh, reasons that they were exercise delivering on their government duties um, on both sides of the uh, on both sides of the house and I uh, have not asked why members on the opposite side of the house might not have been may, may not have been present um, but I'm certain that whoever was not present today was not present for good reason either for performing government duties or for uh, some some personal reason and that would be the case uh, with with the members on our side as well as theirs One hundred percent. What message do you want to send to people that have been critical of this policy, specifically uh, trans kids, their parents, and the LGBT uh, uh, I would say that we need to be there not only as a government, but as a, as, as families, uh, as a community, in supporting all of our children. Um, that, that's what this bill, as uh, at its very core, is about: is providing parents the right not the opportunity uh, to support their child through uh, the formative years of their life and some very important decisions that our children are facing uh, through those, those particular years. And so that's what this bill is focused on. That does not end the government's work when it comes to what can we do to further support children, uh, children and all community members, I would say, uh, that may be um, in, in a vulnerable position for a period of time or may be faced with a, a very challenging decision uh, in, in their life, of which I think in fairness we can all say that we have been at some point or, or another. Um, we have talked openly about some of the supports that are in place today and have been brought uh, into play over the course of the, the last uh, number of months and years. We have the, the mental health first aid uh, individuals present in each school across the province. We have expanded our our uh, rapid access counseling services beyond uh, being available in 24 communities to just adults, but to 13 of those communities now being available uh, to students. Um, and we, I've said openly that if there are other opportunities, not just in light of this very public 
public discussion that we've had the last couple of months through the introduction of a policy and legislation and now proclaiming of that legislation. Um, but if there are other opportunities that the government has to engage to further support, um, I would say all community residents, um, but support our children. Um, we're open to looking at that, like we always should be, long beyond uh, the current discussion that we're having today. Or is it sort of uh, up to the school to make that decision or that mental health person in the, in the school? Because I think that's one of the kind of open questions of how this will be implemented. Yeah, well, I, I would say first and foremost, and I'll, I'll turn this over to the to the Minister of Education uh, with respect to the specific uh, clause in the policy or the comments that, that he will have on that. But I would say that we all, whether we're a teacher, a parent, a community member, have a, have, have a, have a, a, a duty to report. When we, when we see a, a child that, you know, may be in a, in a dangerous situation and, and the legislation does outline um, some of the, the wording around this, we have, a, we have a responsibility and a duty to report. Um, many of our school divisions have had very similar, if not uh, parallel policies in place for years, if not decades now. I mean, they have policies and, and protocols and procedures in place uh, for children that are, are in a, a dangerous position, a challenging position, uh, whatever that might be, whether it be on this topic of, of conversation or, or anything else. But, uh, Minister Cockrell, if you had anything to add to that? Yeah, thank you. You know, you, in regards to that, uh, you know, as I stated in committee last night, I mean, our expectation in the legislation is that eventually uh, we want children to have those conversations with their parents. That, that's the intent of this policy and now the legislation. But as I said, the legislation itself is not prescriptive on, you know, a time frame in that regard. And again, uh, you know, we I look forward to having discussions with the Saskatchewan School Boards Association and the 27 school divisions as we get into implementation of this legislation. And I, I think those are conversations that we'll have with school divisions at that time. Yeah, I mean, again, what, what the legislation is intended to achieve is that until, uh, until parental, consent is achieved, uh, parental consent is reached uh, in that sort of situation, then uh, we, would, we would expect that school staff would continue to call uh, children and, and refer to children as, uh, as their given name. Yeah, and again, I spoke to this at committee last night as well. You know, again, we we expect that school divisions, we expect that school division staff uh, in school are following what's in the Education Act. Uh, this bill that we passed today it, it amends the Education Act, and so again, we would continue we would continue to expect that school divisions uh, and their staff are following what's in the legislation. Obviously, we have conversations about implementation going forward with uh, to have with all 27 school divisions. I also spoke last night that, you know, if there's uh, professional concerns, I mean, there's the Saskatchewan Pro Professional Teachers Regulation Board, there's other, um, you know, professional bodies around um, you know, code of conduct or code of ethics. And again, we're, we're confident that we can work with school divisions to uh, ensure the legislation is followed. Well, again, I mean, what what the legislation states is, uh, you know, when when a child uh, requests to go by a, a different name or a different pronoun, a different gender identity, in the schools, again, uh, and under the age of sixteen, parental consent will be required for that different name or gender identity to be recognized. Yeah, 
you know, yeah, I'll, I'll start and then uh, minister. I mean, and I would say that, uh, you know, dealing with uh, split families is not a new situation for, for school divisions. So, again, we'll manage with school divisions. School divisions, you know, already deal with, uh, you know, situations with families where, uh, you know, the parents are no longer together. And, you know, I, I think this, again, we'll work with school divisions to ensure that the implementation is reasonable. So. No, sorry, I was just going to say, I, I think that, of course, schools are well able and experienced in navigating family um, variations and, and are consummate professionals in that regard. And, and, and in, in the bill, it is when um, a child officially requests or requests, certainly, to be called something else or referred to as something else. Obviously, there are impacts on that on student IDs and uh, transcripts and, and the rest. And so where there are those sorts of changes, um, parents would have to be, um, would have to be, you know, would, the, the goal would be to inform them. And, and schools are already dealing with permission around medical treatment in schools or, um, you know, such things where they're navigating, where they have to navigate between you know, split families, one member, someone who has legal guardianship, someone who doesn't, and so on. So nothing really changes in that regard. It's just dealing with the family entity as it's found. And, and in this case, the principal would work with, um, you know, a counselor or otherwise or just as the principal to to navigate that as they're already very very used to navigating. I believe that every every family. I would hope that every family supports their child uh, regardless of any of the decisions that their child m would make. But I do believe that a family, parents, uh, do have the right to have that opportunity to support their child. Yes. Yeah, this legislation is not retroactive. So I'd be very uh, clear with respect uh, to the legislation that was introduced, passed, and proclaimed. It started as a policy, uh, really a policy that was making consistent uh, across the province uh, policies that were largely in place uh, already. Um, we've been very clear uh, from the very beginning that we would ensure that that policy is in place, effective, and consistent across the province from the very introduction and, and where this conversation started. Um, where I, I think there is... Uh, room for and should always be room for an active conversation is uh, in how we are as individuals, as community members, um, and, uh, and, and as a government. Um, continuing to support uh, not only our children but all those that may be faced with challenging or, or decisions or in a, uh, a, vulnerable, a vulnerable position for, for some period of time. That's why, you know, as we've been moving through with this, uh, the, the, the stages of this policy development and legislation the last uh, number of weeks, uh, you've seen this government, myself yesterday up in Prince Albert, uh, providing additional operational funding to second stage, uh, second stage shelters, for example. That's why uh, you've seen this government, I believe it was last Friday, Minister go out and, and talk about expanding uh, the, the supports that we have for not only assisted living and, and, and emergency shelters, but looking at new and innovative ways to address uh, some of those uh, in our community that unfortunately have some, some very complex needs and how we can provide um, those individuals with pathways to a, um, to, a, to a better opportunity in life. And so, you know, those are ways uh, that we always have to be open as a government to uh, having conversations about how a government and what the government's role is uh, in support supporting um, 
supporting essentially the, the the people that live here in Saskatchewan and and this bill is part of that uh, we believe that you know having parents and giving parents the right to to uh, support uh, their child most certainly is part of uh, of building that 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 successful community I don't understand how the policy is I'll, I'll just I'll speak to that first. Um, you know, again, you know, in, in situations that uh, where there's been uh, name or gender identity changes in specific school divisions or specific schools in the past, again, this this legislation uh, doesn't necessarily speak to that. Again, going forward, this is the policy that now in legislation. Um, again, if there are school divisions that have concerns about being compliant with the legislation uh, and bring up individual situations, again, that's a conversation that uh, I'm open to having with uh, with the school divisions and with the Saskatchewan School Boards Association around implementation. So. You know, I, what would what would be required under the legislation is for supports to be provided by the principal, as is, uh, I think it's subsection 197. So, uh, again, we would expect that, uh, you know, if there's a situation like that, that school divisions are seeking to provide supports in school and in the community uh, to that child. Again, it, it's important to highlight here, and, we, and we've, you know, mentioned it uh, numerous times on the floor of the Assembly, that... Again, these these policies were already largely in practice in numerous school divisions. School divisions have already been having these exact conversations with children. So, you, you know, again, I, I I would hope that school divisions continue to have those conversations, redouble their efforts in that regard to make sure that their children are supported, and again, helping parents uh, or helping children, pardon me, uh, come to a place where they feel comfortable communicating with their parents. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable that 197.42, uh, you know, it speaks to situations where uh, a child may feel there may be harm. There's explicit direction in the legislation now that just passed today that supports are to, are to be provided to the children. And again, I, but it also comes, the answer to your question also comes back to, you know, again, I, I think the, the opposition's amendment uh, took away the default position being that parents are are to be included and again that uh, that's not something that we're comfortable with the whole uh, you know reason behind this policy is we want to see parents more involved in their child's education we want parent that right to be preserved for children to be involved in their child's education so again I I think uh, 19742 speaks to you know specific situations that the opposition or others may be concerned about and again um, I'll come back to this again uh, school divisions have already been doing this uh, largely in practice uh, to great extent across the province in different communities. Uh, what this legislation does is make that requirement to provide supports consistent right across the province. You know, again, I, I would say, you know, speaking, you know, going back, you know, if there's conversations that uh, children have had with school divisions in years past, um, you know, I, again, I, there's specifics. We, we've talked about a specific school division that had an explicit policy of um, not communicating with a parent in that case. Again, 
Um, I understand that that policy has been removed by that particular school division. And again, what this, uh, what our legislation does is again, makes it consistent across 27 school divisions that parental consent is eventually to be sought. I'll get, I'm coming to your an answer here. But again, what, speaking about situations that already may be active in your words uh, in, in school divisions and schools around the province, again, the expectation is that supports will be provided. And, you know, we, at the end of the day, the legislation, we want to get people, we want to get children comfortable to a place where they're comfortable having a conversation with their parent. You know, and again, if there's specific situations uh, in school divisions, I'm happy to speak with school divisions. Our, our officials will work out, work with school divisions, reach out to them, and, uh, and make sure that any specific questions in different situations may be answered. So a Minister of Justice would uh, likely have a comment on that as well, but it would be entirely out of the, the, the jurisdiction of the federal government. And given um, some of the, the judgments that have come down of where they have, uh, have operated, uh, attempted to operate uh, through Bill C-69, the Impact Assessment Act, or more commonly known as the No More Pipelines Act, um, Commonly, uh, the, the federal government has repeatedly tried to, attempted to operate in areas of provincial jurisdiction, and this would be uh, very blatantly just that. So I, I highly doubtful that the federal government um, would attempt to do that, given the, the most recent ruling uh, that has come down, saying that they have essentially, um, well, like beyond their, their, their jurisdictional competence, I believe the Minister of Justice will have a, a little more detail on that. Absolutely, this is within provincial jurisdiction, and if the federal government attempted to legislate in this area, it would be absolutely um, beyond their jurisdiction. Um, so that would be nothing really short of a constitutional uh, crisis, and um, I don't think it will come to that. I think uh, that we're within, completely within our provincial rights uh, doing this and within our, our provincial jurisdiction, and case closed. Well, that, I mean, it would be, they would have to legislate in that area, in this area. And, I mean, again, not to get into all the, the vicissitudes of late around exclusive jurisdiction under the, um, the Constitution for, you know, under 92A, the natural resources, that's quite different, obviously, than this. I mean, the, the exclusive jurisdiction under 92A for natural resources is, is what we've been challenging all these things on the Bill C-69, the, the coming oil cap, the clean electricity regulations. That's very, very clearly provincial jurisdiction and what we've argued and we're successful um, in having argued among, with other provinces last Friday is that you can, you can call it many things, um, which the federal government has tried to do, but ultimately had to bring out peace order and good government, you know, the, the major trump card to, um, to overreach massively into that provincial jurisdiction under 92A. Similarly, if they were to legislate something in this regard, it would be, while not a, not a 92A issue, exclusive jurisdiction over natural resources, it would certainly be a violation of, of provincial jurisdiction. So we certainly would hope that that would not be the case, and I, I expect it won't be. This, this is not uh, in any way uh, targeting anyone. This is targeting uh, how we can best support uh, our children in our community. And step one of that support is to provide the parents with that opportunity uh, to support um, their children. Uh, to, to, to an earlier question as well, um, sh should there be an ongoing uh, situation uh, where, where this is not the case, where parents have not uh, ultimately been involved in that those would be in the minority as largely the policy across uh, the province has been uh, mirrored or sim very similar to what the government has introduced uh, here today. Uh, we would expect that those supports are being uh, built as if that uh, situation had arose um, 
subsequent to to uh, to this law being proclaimed uh, here today. And so this is uh, not about uh, targeting uh, anyone in any way. This is about um, building uh, those supports and providing parents with a right uh, to to be involved in, in their child's education and life and ultimately to be a part of that support group um, that is being built around that child, which I think, in fairness, everyone wants, whether wherever you sit in the legislature, um, and everyone wants, uh, regardless of what, uh, what expert reports uh, they have put forward. This ensures that the parents do have the right to be involved, and we would hope that they all take that. Minister, sorry, Minister, uh, what happens on Monday? You know, you're school divisions with 27 million you know, on some policies that are similar to, as you say, to what the government has, others don't, some may not have one. Um, what should they be doing on Monday now that this is law? What's the expectation? Hey, well, I think the Premier just outlined it really well. I mean, there is. Uh, Again, this bill does not uh, seek to target anyone specifically. It, it aims to provide supports that are available in school, in the community, and but at the end of the day, it aims to ensure that really, I think, the foremost expert in a child's life, their parents or their guardians, are in, you know to be included in these important discussions and decisions. Certainly, uh, Ministry of Education officials are going to be reaching out to school divisions very soon, and you know, as as quickly as we are able to, to start having discussions around implementation and be available to answer questions. Um, I, I've got a number of uh, meetings with different school divisions coming up over the next number of weeks. I look forward to answering questions from locally elected board trustees and chairs around this policy if they have any. And again, certainly having, uh, having that proactive discussion about how we can ensure that the right supports uh, are available to students, uh, being provided to those students, regardless of whether or not students are having discussions around gender identity or if it's, if it's other issues in a child's life. I mean, I've, I've spoken before, I mean, uh, growing up, being a, a young person in 2023, it's, uh, there's a few more complexities than there were uh, when many of us were that age. And certainly we want to make sure that children and youth are supported regardless of what they're facing in their life. And again, those are the discussions I look forward to having with school divisions. Broader education note, I'm just uh, curious about uh, the uh, storm cloud on the horizon being the labor negotiations with Saskatchewan Teachers Federation. And uh, I, I'm, are you concerned this whole debate on the Parents' Bill of Rights may have uh, worsened the situation, created some further distrust? I, I'm hearing a lot of uh, concerns out there from teachers. And, uh, just uh, wondering if I could get a comment. Yeah, I understand the Saskatchewan Teachers Federation has uh, released a statement on the, the passage of the bill. I haven't had time to review that statement as of yet. I, I will take the opportunity to do that here today and over the weekend. You know, certainly I, I am concerned about, uh, you know, there's a, there's a sanction vote uh, happening next week with Saskatchewan Teachers Federation and their members. I am concerned because we have seen over the last number of years um, how important it is for our children to be learning in the classroom, uh, for our children to be participating in important extracurricular activities, whether that be sports or, or uh, music or arts. Um, you know, it, that is vitally important that our teachers are able to do the good work that they do and continue to do that and that our children have the opportunity to, to learn and to grow and develop in, in schools. Um, I, I was clear earlier this week, and, and I'll say it again, bar government is at the bargaining table. We're ready uh, to get a deal done with teachers. What we have put forward, we believe, is a fair deal for teachers. Uh, it was disappointing when the Saskatchewan Teachers Federation leadership walked away from the bargaining table last week. But I've been clear with Ms. Beacott, I've been clear with the Teachers Federation, um, we'll bargain any day of the week. Every week we are ready to bargain. We want to have a fair deal that provides certainty and predictability for families, for students, and for teachers in this province. What if you have teachers and principals in schools that don't follow the legislation? Like what mechanism is in the legislation to enforce it? Again, I, I did answer that question earlier in, in regards to, you know, we expect school divisions to follow the Education Act, as they have been for many years. Um, if there's teachers that fall outside of that, again, there are professional bodies uh, that we hope, uh, you know, live up to their, you know, responsibilities as a, as a professional and regulating body uh, to, uh, to deal with situations as they come up. But again, uh, you know, we want to, we want to make sure that uh, as this policy is implemented, that's consistent across the province. We've been clear about that uh, all the way through over the last number of weeks and really over the last number of months.
Well, this bill emulates and 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 really um, is parallel to a policy that is is largely in place in in school divisions and classrooms across the province. Um, this bill is about bringing parents in to support uh, their children, for, uh, whatever uh, their children uh, might be facing uh, in in their life. And admittedly, the the challenges that our that our children face today are very different from the challenges, for example, uh, to to when I grew up a number of years ago. And those. You know, with uh, with the digital age and social media and phones, uh, those challenges are coming an awful lot quicker, and 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 uh, and more of them, I think, to our to our our children here today. And so, what this bill is is, uh, as I said, is um, largely mirroring uh, what is happening uh, in the majority of the classrooms across the province today. Um, what this bill is is providing parents with the very right uh, to have that opportunity to support their children, not the opportunity to support their kids, but the right uh, to support. Uh, their child um, and as I said uh, this is a government that uh, I think has to continue to have conversations as to uh, what role we are playing today in supporting all the members of our, of our communities uh, across the province but what role uh, does this government uh, need to continue to look at in, and, and conversations that we have uh, in in, in in increasing those supports in, in the months and, and years ahead and ensuring that the supports that we have are, are effective uh, for uh, you know what our children are fa facing in today's day and age so that it, it is not the case it's not the government's intent um, and and that's unfortunate and I, I can't answer a question as to what someone else is feeling what I can answer is to uh, what this bill is intended to do is to build those supports around the those uh, very individuals uh, that are that are facing a challenge in in their life and in this case the discussion is are those individuals under the age of 16 uh, experts and I think all uh, in, in elected members uh, in this province I won't speak for them all but from what I heard uh, the last couple of weeks I think all uh, are under the understanding that parents are a very important part of that uh, of those supportive mechanisms and those supportive structures that are, are built around our children um, are there other um, elements to uh, to supporting that child certainly they are I've listed a few of those that the government is involved in in providing uh, as well as I, I think communities and school divisions uh, provide uh, some of those supports as well and I, I think that's uh, you know very important for us all to remember as we go through a very public discussion uh, in this province uh, is that this is about supporting the child and this is about opening up um, avenues and pathways uh, for all to support that child. Time for a few last questions. Premier, um, critics of this bill have been saying this I haven't looked at any of that, no. All right, and one more, please. Um, what do you think that the passing of this bill and the use of the notwithstanding clause tells Canada and the world about Saskatchewan? That uh, this is opening up uh, the very right uh, for parents to be involved in their child's education and their child's life. That's the goal and the target of this bill. Uh, if there is one, is to uh, provide parents with that right and to uh, help build uh, that supportive infrastructure, those supportive uh, groups of people around uh, Saskatchewan children. The answer is no. Pardon me. Not discussed. No. So, so let me ask uh, the, the, the reverse question. How does keeping this information from the parent help that child? How, do, how does hiding that information about a very important decision that a child is, is faced with help support that child in any way? Um, what this does is provides uh, those supports to be built around that child so that they can have that conversation to include their parents who everyone agrees is one of the most important people to be part of that support infrastructure that support group around that child this is about building those supports uh, so that conversation can ultimately happen and so ultimately that child can have uh, if the opportunity is there and i'd largely say it is um, 
to have their parents involved in supporting them throughout their life. That's what this legislation is about. Does lying to the parents have that same uh, opportunity for a negative outcome? Does hiding that information from the parents um, in any way improve uh, that outcome? What we want to do in a very structured way is actually emulate um, what many school divisions have already already have in place across this province. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey. Well, when we feel this is a vehicle to ensure that those supports are being built around uh, those 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 children that may have, for some reason, nervousness around approaching their parents for good reason, uh, to build those supports around that child so that they can include ultimately that child, um, that child's parents, um, uh, what would hopefully be in uh, part of to be part of that supportive infrastructure. That that's what this legislation is is ultimately provides provides the right for parents to be involved. We hope they all take it. You, anything to add to that, you two? Front Minister Justice. Well, and, and I, one of the points that I've I've heard on that on that, um, which is quite con convincing, is that in in many ways it's helpful to have a pathway built in, in, in instead of the, the perhaps su sudden realization that something has happened. This allows there to be a pathway worked on through the school with the principal with mental health um, counselor or counselor in the school to have that conversation and to lead to that conversation and to lead to that parental inclusion and and i think the the other thing that's been raised and and you know, former minister of education made the point in the house today is that one of the major reasons that you know for the bill originally were it was hearing from from teachers as well and that 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 you know the, the teachers felt often put in a very difficult position um, to have to navigate this and navigate this around uh, parents. So I, I think you know it clarifies certainly what's already been practiced in a lot of ways, but it also um, formalizes that uh, very sometimes painful process for a child and a parent. Housing, sir, can you give us some indication as to what form you can offer support for housing in Toronto? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, and uh, probably stay tuned would be uh, what I would I would say with respect uh, to that. Um, we have the speech from the throne coming up, which will ultimately um, lay out the the plan that this government has been working on alongside a very important yeah, piece of education policy. Regulation, uh, relationships with municipalities, there's a number of vehicles. I would say stay tuned with respect to what uh, people should be looking for, but we understand there's affordability concerns at the family level. Um, and we've seen uh, the federal government uh, move into this space when it comes to rental properties, been looking closely at, you know, where are the, uh, where, where, where can we have the, the largest impact in Saskatchewan? Would that be uh, in the case, uh, in the space of rental properties or um, uh, affordable housing ownership, uh, for example? There's a number of different levels to uh, having a, a place to live in this province and the uh, the government, the Minister of Finance and others have been looking closely at how uh, if we were to move in some of this space, how can we uh, most certainly be as effective as possible uh, on behalf of the people that are looking to make Saskatchewan their home. That's all the time we have. Thanks everyone. Thank you.